Yo, welcome to the Feral Druid Quick Meta Guide, which won the poll I put out a while ago by some margin. So here it is. Very, very quickly, before we get started though, I do want to apologize to those who've been waiting for this since the poll. It's been too long, but today is the start of a big content push. So hopefully I'll make it up to you. As always, the video will have a few sections as I wanted to find content as a consumer before, and these are first the basics for PvE, talents, stats, raid playstyle, that kind of thing. This video will then cover the strengths or reasons to play the spec and then contrast this with the inverse, the limitations or reasons not to play Feral. Once that's done though, we're going to go on to professions and PvP briefly, but if you're looking for granular detail on these topics, you'd be best off looking at dedicated guides on these topics once you've checked out this one of course. So let's get on to the spec. And yes, you can now do both roles optimally in the same 0.44.17 talent tree. Only gear swaps are necessary. We begin with 5 points in Ferocity, both because it's great, but also because like Vanilla, Warriors have a stronger AP reduction buff, so we defer to them. A note here though, is that if you wanted to be a pure DPS Feral without any tanking, you can go 5 points in Feral Aggression also because there are times where you may use Ferocious Bite, but broadly speaking, I wouldn't recommend taking on the inflexibility for this relatively small gain on potential DPS. Next, we put three points into Thick Hide and Feral Instincts for the little armor boost for survival and the threat boost respectively. From this stage, we take all the remaining Feral points below, apart from Nurturing Instinct and Primal Tenacity, as these are PvP oriented talents that we just don't need for PvE. The remaining 17 points go into the rest of the tree, which fortunately is now home to Natural Shapeshifter and Omen of Clarity, whilst Natural Weapons from Classic got baked together with the Healing Touch talent in Resto, so all in all life is good, we're grabbing all these damage and resource boosts that were formerly split across Resto and Balance before TBC, and we then have 3 points to spare to dump into Intensity, which is another baked talent that was formerly Improved Enrage and Reflection in Vanilla. Baked talents, druids, right? Once this is done though, you're ready for both cat and bear rolls depending on the needs at the time, with only gear changes needed as mentioned. But what stats are we switching up for those gear sets? Let's start with bears. As with most tanks, we're interested in avoidance stats to keep us alive, but in the case of bear, parry and block don't work as you're probably aware. As such, we want to beeline for crit immunity, which requires 2.6% crit reduction for bears, thanks to the survival of the fittest talent. Whilst the same can be said for other tanks, it's very important to note that druids in particular can mix and match defense and resilience to achieve this, as the PvP gear is actually pretty good for bears in particular. We get 1% crit reduction for every 59.15 defense rating, or 39.4 resilience. Always round up though when calculating to ensure you actually get that benefit, because we can't obviously have 0.4 resilience. In separate terms, bears want 154 defense rating on gear, pushing us up to a total of 415 defense, or 103 resilience on gear to be crit immune. As mentioned though, you can mix and match defense and resilience to achieve the same goal, but just make sure that you're calculating it correctly of course, and I'm sure there is a calculator out there that will do it for you if you can't be bothered. A quick note though, extra resilience is a dead stat, so we're going to avoid that. Extra defense though is fairly solid as you get more and more dodge because as you approach higher and higher dodge percent the value actually increases which leads me to agility, dodge and stamina. These stats will keep you alive. Agility is pretty much always the best stat to take. It provides threat via crits and the additional 10 rage from crits via the primal fury talent to then spend on generating additional threat. In particular agility pushes up our dodge by 1% for every 14.7 agility. As mentioned though, increasing the dodge chance actually gains value the more you get. So agility is exceptional for both sides of the tanking role and will almost always be the best stat. The only cases where this may change is on magic heavy fights without much melee swings. But generally speaking, agility is your top stat by a large margin for the majority of encounters. Dodge rating is similarly valuable on the defensive side of the role though to a slightly worse degree at 18.9 rating per 1% dodge. However, as you may guess, it has no impact on threat 
and as such you'd much rather use agility to get more dodge rather than dodge rating but it's still a good stat to use regardless. Stamina is the core set that keeps us chonky, technical term of course, whilst its value per point isn't at the level of agility, dodge or defense, you do want high stamina pieces where possible for effective HP gains to match the content. Likewise on magic damage encounters, stamina will gain value as mitigation is pretty much out the window in these scenarios for bears aside from crit immunity. In terms of maintaining threats, we're mostly interested in expertise, hit and strength. These are going to be the biggest complements to what you're already doing for the defensive side of the game to allow you to maintain threat. In regards to expertise, it caps out at 26 overall rating or 103 rating on your gear. And it's really nice to have for threat intensive encounters, but it's probably not gonna be possible most of the time. But I do want to point out here that it's the only stat that competes with agility's per point value. In recent theory crafting, it is worth a little more or a little less depending on the model. Two quick notes though on expertise to give some context to what I just said. Expertise is about twice as valuable as hit, give or take, and the reduction in parry haste, and by consequence reduction in damage intake, makes expertise hyper valuable as it double dips, just like agility, as a threat and defensive stat somewhat. Anytime you can gain expertise without becoming super squishy, you will want to grab it. It is fantastic. Now in terms of the sort of pure DPS stats, armor penetration is pretty good in the late game as often mentioned. It scales insanely well and has increasing returns as you get more of it unlike every other stat basically. So where possible, and we are talking from tier 6 and Zulaman onwards, you can use more armor pen heavy items in some slots such as Staff of Primal Fury or Stanchion of Primal Instinct to maximize your threat. The per point value of armor pen as usual is pretty low, but you'll notice that most items with it on have it in abundance. So compared to other items that would have haste or hit or whatever, armor pen has just got huge amounts on it. So actually it works out on the budget terms really, really strong. I will mention though that living is the goal and agility is still kind of your bread and butter. But if tuning is kind of weak or you're overgeared or something like that, armor penetration items will help a lot on just providing more DPS and threat in general. So to summarize, tuning will determine how deep you go in on armor pen in the late game, but typically it is kind of useful if you can pick it up here and there for threat. Haste isn't awful, but it isn't amazing either comparative to the other threat stats and most gear you're interested in won't have haste, but a few exceptions do exist in the late game especially. Cat wise, it's very similar to the threat stats we've just discussed. Agility and strength are king as you may be familiar with, whilst crit and attack power are also nice. You prefer them in primary form though. Expertise and hit, are still retaining those same goals as mentioned a moment ago. Misses on Mangle and Shred are pretty impactful to your overall DPS, so we want to ensure they are capped out with 9% hit. And expertise wise, it's a similar story again. Difficult to achieve, but nonetheless, you want to try and grab as much as you can, assuming it works out in terms of the overall stat budget. Now, once armor penetration releases, it does pretty much become the top stat over time. Once you get that initial taste, now this is not hard figures, more feely craft, but typically most melee characters will get about 100 to 200 armor pen, and from that point onwards, armor penetration starts getting those increasing returns to a stage where it becomes the top stat or thereabouts for your damage. With the staffs on screen from earlier already leaping you up in terms of armor pen stacking territory by themselves, you will see significant gains as with many other melee characters in your DPS following this stat. However, it's worth noting that Zulaman and tier 6 won't be out for a long while, so armor penetration isn't really on your mind at all until that point. So until then, you're pretty much looking for your primaries, expertise, hit, and obviously some crit here and there in its crit rating form, but you would rather have agility. 
and haste is kind of okay it's just not great again it's like not bad it's just not good either so in general focus on your primaries expertise and hit so that's a rudimentary breakdown of the stats you're going to look at but what is the gameplay like well for bears we're going to keep mangle on cooldown as a priority we can keep up debuffs like Demo Raw and Fairy Fire, but we're often going to rely on a Warrior and Boomkin to provide stronger versions of these debuffs. Excess Rage is going to be used on Maul, and typically you're going to use Maul quite a lot of the time, almost as often as you can use it, but you'll never want to delay Mangle, so you want to keep an eye on any low rage points and ensure you're okay to Mangle on cooldown as a priority. On single targets, especially in earlier content, you will want to weave in and maintain five stacks of Lacerate. However, Lacerate isn't very good snap threat, so whilst I don't have a template opener rotation for you, just be sure not to spam to five stacks in a row. Build them gradually between mangles and mauls, and then just refresh as often as needed, but nothing more. On two or more targets, or in the super late game, Swipe is actually your go-to. Now this makes sense for AoE of course, but why single target later in the game? Well quite simply, Lacerate kinda sucks because the initial damage does not scale. So as you gear up, Swipe is going to gradually overtake Lacerate as those spare global option when you have a lot of rage and you can't press mangle and you're still spamming more. In those scenarios, you will be swiping even on single target towards the end of the content cycle. In regards to cat form and DPSing, it's going to be very similar to the vanilla classic experience. The main difference being that we are ensuring Mangle is up unless there's another Feral doing it for you, and we are spending combo points with Rip. The bread and butter of the damage is entirely in shred and power shifting. And yes, you'll be wearing that trusty old level 40 blue item from vanilla if you're strictly DPSing on an encounter to maximize shift energy. To summarize, you're going to be spamming Shred, keeping the Mangle debuff up and spending on Rip whilst power shifting. There was a spicy bug that I saw mentioned on Elitist Jerks, which was like kind of the original Theorycraft forums. And I suspect it's probably dead in the water because of the MS changes that Blizzard have introduced with batching being removed essentially, but apparently it was possible to double dip your mangle effect on your rips, which was a nice DPS increase. Now I'll link them in the description below, the posts that explain this. I won't go into too much depth because I don't think it will be the case on live, but just in case it is, I've included them in the description. Now usually from this point I mention race choice, but druids. Tarons are a little thicker, and of course, we like the thick ones, God but it right. kind of just comes down to faction. And with that said, we're on to the juicy part of the video. What's good? So the first thing that sprung to mind, and pretty much what neatly summarizes the real nice thing about being a Feral Druid, is that you're hyper versatile and are very, very strong tanks, whilst also being a solid DPS option but more so than that, you scale really, really well. And even in fights where you tank for a large chunk of the time, you can still catch some of the lower end DPS if they aren't pushing themselves. Shadow Priests, Boomies, the Affliction Lock, they better be scared because if they make mistakes or they're slacking, you can genuinely catch them on the meters. So if you enjoy being a complete chad on the meters, even as a tank, this is 100% the spec for you and as i mentioned it's a very neat kind of explanation of what's good about feral druids usually i try to put more into it because there's more to say but in this scenario it's just a really well-rounded spec that is hard to hate on to be honest and you'll see that in just a few minutes but realistically feral's just solid capable on tanking most encounters no real issue has the best tank dps single target in the game and can make lower dps class sweat a little so on that note, I will mention a small tidbit that is completely irrelevant outside of just, you know, having some fun. If you love staves, this is also the spec for you. There are all kinds of cool staves that you will likely equip 
along the TBC journey, and there's even a weeb staff if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> so, memes aside, where does the Feral Druid struggle or have some downsides? Well, I know some players enjoy specialising in a single role, be it tank, healer or DPS. However, in TBC especially, it's pretty awkward to lock yourself into only tanking or only DPSing as Feral. Since you can do both in the same spec, you are often going to be asked to do both tanking and DPSing either within the same encounter or depending on what kind of encounter it is. As such, the versatility can also be a kind of small downside for some. You will often be flip-flopping between roles and will typically want two gear sets, which of course includes enchants, gems, etc. So just a note here, nothing too bad, but if you're into specializing, this is going to be a bit of an awkward one for you. Another downside for some will be that whilst Feral Tanks are very good across pretty much all content, they suit off tank roles more often, especially in the earlier tiers as you will be crushable unlike Paladins and Warriors. Due to this, if the tuning on bosses is somewhat solid, you may find main tanking situations a little rare at times, but don't take that the wrong way. You definitely can and will main tank bosses, especially if tuning is weak. Bears put out great single target threat and DPS compared to Warriors and Paladins, so you'll likely be the tank of choice for speedy clears or pass attempts in theory. And once somewhere plateau is the rate of choice, you will be forgiven for feeling a little busted in how good your performance will be as a tank. So don't let me dissuade you too much, it's just an FYI. Keep it in mind that main tanking, if that's really what you want to do, might be a tiny bit awkward at times as Feral, especially early on. So now we're on to professions though, and the usual suspect is here. The Supreme Leader, the one true idol, leatherworking, of course, who else? And yes, drums are the reason, simple as that. I would explain further, but you're probably bored of hearing it. As a bonus though, there is a strong endgame chest piece for your DPS set, though there is one chest that's a little stronger. Whilst the usual suspects again of dual crafting enchanting follow up leatherworking, in the case of Feral, engineering is also a strong option. The goggles are pretty good for the early game, and you do get a decent pair in Sunwell too, though they're nothing too crazy. The big benefit is the ability to stack goblin rocket launchers. Tank trinkets are pretty meh in the early stages, and pretty much for most of the expansion even, so just having the pure chonk available for any hard hitting pulls will be good to have as an option, and if tuning's good, they may be a staple trinket for you for most encounters, at least early on. That said though, I'd probably drop engineering whenever it gets to a point where you're kind of not that interested in equipping rocket launchers anymore because the goggles themselves are just not worth it overall, assuming you're going to get all the gear in the end. Another sort of off key option that isn't going to be mentioned for most classes, but definitely should for Feral, is alchemy. The first alchemist stone does have a nice role player trinket in the early game. It's nothing special though, so I do want to highlight that it's not crazy, it's more a case that the options for tanks early on are pretty piss poor. So it's a good thing to have and will be beneficial, but it's not lighting up the world or anything. You still will probably lean towards that holy triumvirate of leather working paired with either enchanting or jewel crafting because they're just hard to overlook long term. One small note though, is that I usually meme about being one of the lucky few to escape leatherworking. But in the case of Feral, in a min-max situation specifically, you're going to be hard pressed to avoid it. You're often going to be in the triple Beastmaster Hunter group to provide leader of the pack. And being the guy that doesn't have drums inside that group is pretty awkward because it's the pumper group. It's, you know, the crazy single target group. Just something I thought was worth mentioning, of course you can try and escape it, no problem, but this is one of the specs where I would emphasize that min maxi kind of feel to the drums and leatherworking. With that said though, we're on to PvP, and this is an interesting one. Let's get the facts out right away. Feral is a little off meta. It's not god awful at all, far from it. It's very capable of doing well in arenas, but the truth is that most of the time a rogue is a better fit and whilst some very experienced players will definitely pull off 
Farrell well and achieved some impressive results, no doubt. I couldn't find any Ferals at the top of private server ladders at all, and if you're solely interested in doing Arena just for the gear, I think Resto or Resto Kin is going to be an easier experience for you to achieve that objective. If you are keen to play Feral though, Rogue and Feral or Feral and Disc are probably your best options for twos, whilst in threes you merge those Rogue and Discs into a nice threes comp or you go with a Mage and Disc for essentially an RMP-ish kind of comp. These are not top tier comps as far as I can tell, but they can take you to your goals if you get to the required skill level, it just won't be easy as if you were a similarly skilled wrestler druid. I saw some posts that suggest there is a nice power spike from season 3 onwards because you get better itemization on arena items and the 2 piece tier 6 bonus helps it just you know smooth out the kind of damage dealing and stuff like that. But again I can't speak from an expert point of view here. I do want to mention though that when I did look into Feral. In Arena specifically, I heard a content creator called USB, but with a Z instead of an S, as a very popular name that came up in regards to Feral Druid. So it may be worth checking out their content if you are keen to play Feral at a high level in Arena. Outside of this though, I can't really add much else. It's a little off meta, but capable is kind of the summary. And with that said though, we're now at the end of the video. I hope you found it useful as a quick overview, that's kind of the goal of all these videos of life as a Feral Druid in TPC, but ultimately I hope to see you next time, hopefully, in your notifications.